Hi, I'm Ryan Backstrand with Rightway Load Scales. I'm a product engineer here, and I'm going to walk you through how to properly set up your 201 series load scale. So what we have here is a 201 EBT 02B, and this is our Bluetooth version with two air sensors. And so when you first get it installed and you turn it on, um, it'll give you a, a weight. So we've got some air pressure in there. We're empty. And right now we're in what we call average mode, you know, so it's averaging those two air sensors together, and that would be used for if you have a dual height control valve. Um, and I'll show you how to change those modes. So let's say we've got a tractor trailer. We've got a single height control valve drive, a single height control valve trailer. We've got an airline going all the way back. And we're going to change that mode in what we call SIDP mode, and that's steer independent. So with the gauge off, you hold down the up and down arrows together and press power, and that gets you into the mode select screen. So we've got average, and then you hit the up arrow to cycle through. We've got four cal, and we'll get to that later. We've got IDP, so that would just be the drive in the trailer. And we've got SAVG, I know this is, this is a lot, we'll, we'll probably cover this in the comments or something, but um, SAVG would give you like steer and a dual height control valve drive. Um, SIDP gives us the steer, drive, and trailer. So we're gonna stay on SIDP mode and press power. So now that's saved it, so we'll turn it back on. And you'll notice we've got a one down there. So that's our steer. And when we press the blue menu button, that gets us to our drive axle. And we press it again, that gets us to our trailer axle. So we're ready to calibrate. Um, we're, we're empty right now. We've got a low pressure in the airbags. So I'm gonna grab my CAT scale ticket here. And it says, okay, my steer axle's 11,700. So while the one is selected, we'll hold down Cal low until Cal low pops up. And then we'll just adjust this up until we get pretty close to our 11,700. All right, so it moves in <clears throat> units of 10 here, um, but once you save it, it will average up to the, to the highest 50 pound increment. So we'll get to 11,700. We'll hold down Cal low, and you'll probably see it pop up to 11. No, it stayed there, so that's fine. So that's our steer axle. Now we're gonna switch to our drive, okay? Our empty drive axle is 11,960, so we'll go ahead and do Cal low. And cal up, up arrow to 11,960. Okay, there we go, it's close enough. And you'll see it probably average up to an even 12, and that's fine. So it's, it, it actually saved the 11,960 in the background, but it just shows you the average up to the next 50. Okay, then we'll switch over to axle group three, and we'll do our trailer axle. So we're looking for 13,100. Okay, so now if we hit this menu button one more time, you'll see one, two, and three come up, and that'll add up to our total weight. So our scale says 36,800. Our gross weight on our ticket says 36,760. So that's right there with an averaged up of 50 pounds. So that's your empty calibration and we're ready to, uh, to go get loaded and, and do the loaded. Okay, so we've raised up our air pressure. I got a pressure regulator back there to just kind of simulate what happens in your airbags when you get loaded. Um, so we're sitting here at 68,800 pounds gross. And you'll notice we've got the one, two, three showing all three axles and here I can't actually do anything calibration wise, you know, I hold down Cal High, nothing's gonna happen, we can't calibrate in that mode, we have to do each axle separately. So we'll hit the menu button, that'll get us to axle group one, which is our steer. We've got our loaded ticket here, so we're gonna do Cal High, and actually we're really close, we're, we're, our loaded steer is 11,800, so we'll just drop that down to 800. Hold down Cal High. You'll notice the little CH disappears, so that's saved. And then we'll hit uh, menu again, get us to our drive axle. And we're showing 28,200, and we want to get to 34,960. We're going to get a ticket. So we'll uh, hold Cal High, and we'll raise that up to 34,960.
All right, then we hold down Cal High to save that, and it's showing right between 34.950 and uh, 35, which is exactly what we want. So now we'll switch to the trailer axle, and we're shooting for 33.100. So we'll hold Cal High. Cal High to save it. All right, so now when we push our menu button one more time, we'll get that gross weight. We're looking for 79,860, and our gauge is showing us 79,850. So we are good to go. And in this case, you know, we're a little heavy on our drives, so you'd probably want to slide your tandems forward a little bit uh, to take off some of that weight off your drives because we're still under our gross. We're 79,860. So as soon as we move those uh, trailer tandems forward, you know, we're going to be legal and we can get on the way. And you didn't have to go to a scale to do it. Okay, so now we've got our gauge set up. Um, it's showing our gross weight and I'm going to show you how to set an overweight warning. And so what you do is you hold down the Cal High and Cal Low buttons together and it'll bring up a menu that says CH and it'll be a zero. And so anytime this says zero, it won't ever flash. You could be up 90,000 pounds and it, it'll just show the weight. But what we could do is set an overweight limit of, um, let's, say, you, let's say you don't want to go over 79,000 pounds or you want a warning when you get there. Um, so we'll just run this up to 79,000. All right, so we're at 79,000. And then to save that, we hold Cal High and Cal Low together again. And it gets us back to our, to our standard weight. And see, now we're 79,850, so it's warning us that, uh, that we went overweight. Um, now, when we switch to our steer axle, you know, we're not over 79,000 here, so it's not going to blink. It's not going to blink. It's not going to blink. And then once we get back to our gross, it'll start blinking again. So you have to be on the screen you want it to blink on. Um, you know, if you set it for gross, keep it on that screen. So. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set a pin code. And what that will do is prevent tampering with calibration data. Um, you know, if you're worried about another driver coming up and messing with your stuff while you're sitting in the parking lot, uh, or, or you have a fleet and you want to uh, protect the fleet trailers from the drivers adjusting them. Um, so what you can do is we'll have the gauge off, hold down Cal High and Cal Low together, and press power. And what that's going to do is going to say code. Okay, and we say yes, we want to enter a code. So we'll push enter. And then here we've got five zeros, and these buttons have a little one, two, three, four on them. And so you can set a code. We'll say it's two, three, four, one, two and then hit enter to save that, and it'll say locked. All right, and then anytime, turn the gauge off, anytime we want to adjust calibration, so if we say, oh, let's redo our Cal High, it's going to say code. It's going to ask you for that code. So we'll enter in a code, hit, and then it lets us into Cal High mode. All right, now if we, we'll go ahead and exit Cal High. Now, if we had put in the wrong code, so we'll do Cal High and we'll say, say one, two, 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 two. It says bad, and it goes back to regular weighing mode. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the different modes in the gauge. The gauge, this gauge happens to have two sensors, and so we've got five different modes. We've got, um, well, I'll just walk you through them really quick. So you hold down the down arrow and the up arrow and press power. Um, and so the gauge will start out when you first get it, it's in AVG mode. And we, we talked a little, about, a little bit about that earlier. And that just averages any sensors that you have. So if you have one sensor, it's fine. It's just going to use the one sensor. If you have two, it averages them together. You know, if you have dual height control valves, one might have 65 PSI, the other one has 62. It averages, averages them right down the center. And so that's probably what most people are going to use if you have like an EDG or EBT-01B. Um, and so to change modes, we'll hit the up arrow. And the next mode you'll see is 4Cal. And what that does is it's exactly like AVG mode, but it lets you save four different calibration settings. So you could have 
Mode one um, could be with two axles down. Let's say you have a drop axle that, that um, uses the same height control valve. You know? So you've got two axles down, and then you put your third axle down, and now you know, the system is going to have the same weight on it, but it's all going to be a different pressure because you're going from four airbags to six airbags. And so you can use this mode to cycle between, OK, two axles, three axles, maybe you've got four axles, and then back up. Now what that won't work on is if you have a manually regulated uh, lift axle. You know? So if you have to adjust the pressure to set that axle, this mode won't work. This is for when you have the same height control valve controlling all of them. And so I'll show you what that looks like. Turn the gauge off and back on. So we're in four cal mode. Um, and that also resets your calibration data. So once you have it calibrated, don't change this mode. Um, so we've got a little one down here, and that's cal configuration one. And then we could hit a two, and it'll just kind of go through the second, third, and the fourth. Right now, they're all the same. All right, so let's go ahead and do, uh, we'll calibrate uh, cal, con cal configuration number two. So we're on uh, number two there, and we'll hold cal high. And let's say that when we drop the axle, the weight, the pressure went down, you know, so the weight's going to go down. Um, but the, the weight will actually stay the same, right? So we'll probably have to calibrate up. So we'll go to, let's say, let's say it's 28. And hit cal high. So on a real truck, that weight would have changed when you went to the, when you dropped that axle down, you know, that, that pressure is going to go down. So your weight would have gone down. So you would have actually had to raise it back up to the weight that it was before. Pretty close. It'd probably be best if you went across the cat scale and got a real group weight for the for as a triaxle and as a tandem, empty and loaded. So, okay. So now we've got uh, cal config two, and we can cycle through our three and four. We're not using, but there's our one, and there's our two. So that's four cal mode. Um, now we're going to switch to the next mode. So we'll turn it off, uh, up and down arrow together, and press power. So we were in four cal. Let's see what's next here. IDP mode. So this is exactly like SIDP mode. It just doesn't have the estimated steer. So in IDP mode, you get a one and a two. And the one is sensor A, and that could be your drives. And the two is sensor B, and that's your trailer. And it just goes one and two, and then back, back through. It just cycles around. So this would be if you didn't want to use estimated steer, and you only wanted to do your drive and your trailer. All right, our next mode is SABG, and that is average mode plus steer. So let's say you didn't pull, you didn't have it hooked up to your trailer, and you, or you had a dual high control valve on your truck. That's really the only reason you would use this mode is if you had dual high control valves on your truck. You'd be able to calibrate the steer, and then it would average the drive together. And that's pretty self-explanatory. It looks the same. You know, we've still got the one and the two. The only difference is the one is your estimated steer axle, and the two is your drive. It goes back and it'll show the total weight of your truck without the trailer. So, all right, so our next mode is SIDP. And again, that's steer, drive, and trailer. Sensor A being your drive and sensor B being your trailer. And then we're back around to AVG. So that, that's all of our modes. All right, the next thing I'm going to walk you through is the diagnostic mode. This is kind of a secret menu in the gauge. And it's really helpful if you call into tech support to kind of have some of this information um, ready. Uh, it'll really help us out. And it might even troubleshoot your problem without even uh, having to talk to us. So to get into diagnostic mode, um, you hold down the blue menu button and press power. And what you'll see is the uh, software number pop up here. So in, in this case, this is a Bluetooth gauge. We've got 5.110. Um, you know, so write that down. And then when you press the blue, bet, blue button, it does, it lights up all the digits. So if you think that maybe the CL's not lighting up or something like that, this will test to make sure they're all working. And the next one will show the Bluetooth MAC address. And this is really important when you're searching for your scale on the app and you've got two or three or four different scales you're looking for. Every right way gauge comes with a different MAC address on the Bluetooth chip. So this one is. 6C2D, and so you'll see that in the list on the app. So when we press the blue button again, this is something we use for manufacturing, you have to worry about that. Same with this. Um, one more time, this shows you how many sensors we have installed. So we've got two sensors. We're currently viewing sensor one, 
and it currently has 66 PSI absolute pressure. So to get gauge pressure, just subtract 14 off of this. Um, so, so really we have 52 PSI in our airbags right now. Now if we want to look at, this is for the drives, that's sensor one. If we want to look at sensor two, push the up arrow, and you'll see, okay, we've got two sensors detected. Sensor two, 66 PSI absolute, same pressure. So it'll just cycle back and forth between those. And this could be useful, you know, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm getting air. You know, it's not letting me cal high, something's wrong. You can go in here, if it says 14, then there's zero PSI in the system. Okay, and then we hit uh, menu one more time and it shows our current mode. We're in AVG mode. Uh, it might be SIDP or whatever mode you have it set up in. Um, you know, so you might write that down. That way it will help us, uh, help you faster. And then if you hit menu one more time, this is a keypad test. So this is pad zero and we can walk through the different buttons, right? We push power. We get pad five, one, two, three, four. And then we know that this button works because it's, it's working. And then we're back around to the firmware and you can just keep cycling through the different uh, options in there. And then to get out of this mode, just uh, turn the gauge off and back on. And you're back to your weight screen. All right, now we're gonna show you how to put your trailer weight in if you just have our truck weight, if you just have this gauge on your truck or your trailer and you're monitoring just one drive axle. So when you get the gauge installed, um, you're set up in AVG mode, you've got one high control valve, um, there's really nothing to do with the modes. So we're just, we just have a normal uh, trailer axle group. Um, so right now we've got low pressure in the airbags. Uh, we're sitting at 9,750 pounds and we've gone across the CAT scale. We've got our, our trailer weight for that axle group is 13,100. Um, so we're gonna go uh, do a low cal. So, so we'll hold down cal low until you see CL pop up and we'll raise that number up with the up arrow to 13,100. Okay, and then when we get there, we'll hold down cal low again to save it. All right, and that's our empty cal. And we'll go get loaded up, uh, get the air pressure up in the bags, get a nice heavy load on there, and we'll do the heavy calibration. All right, so I've added some air pressure to this gauge to kind of simulate what happens in the airbags when you add a bunch of weight. Um, and so we're sitting here at 30,350 pounds, um, but we've, we've gone across the scale, let's say, and uh, our trailer weight comes to 33,100. And so we need to do a cal high, and we'll raise that value up to match our scale ticket for the trailer axle group. So hold down cal high. And then we'll use the up arrow and we'll get it to 33,100. Okay, and we'll hold cal high to save it. Okay, now if it doesn't let you get into cal high or cal low, it's probably because you're trying to do these two steps at the same air pressure. We get that call a lot and you just gotta remember, um, you know, do your empty cal while you're empty, while there's low pressure in the bags, and do your loaded calibration while you're heavy and there's high pressure in the bags. Um, the other reason that it might not work is if it's not connected to air. Um, you know, the, if the pressure in the bag doesn't change, it won't let you do one or the other. You know, if you did cal low first and the pressure didn't change, it's not gonna let you do cal high, and you have to actually um, reset the gauge in order to let it do that or get a change in pressure, so go get a load. So.